What up, YouTube family? Happy New Year. Today's video, good cop, bad cop. I got some stories for y'all. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button, cash app in the upper left hand corner. Uh, I felt the need to do this video. There's been some stuff in the news I want to share. So, man, uh, before we do that, I want to tell a story. Some people might have heard this story. Back in the day, I was on the streets. It was back in the crack days and shit like that. Y'all remember them used overalls and the damage, using damaged gear and all of that? I had the overalls and stuff. I went to the mall that day, and I get a call from this chick named Tammy. She finally told me to come over and tap that. So I'm in the mall, man. I can't wait to get finished shopping. I'm about to go over and tap there. You hear me? So uh, I did some shopping, bought some Tim's, some jeans and stuff like that. I had a Jeep Wrangler at the time. So I got my little, you know, my little bags in the back seat and a little, in a little trunk area back there. And uh, she tell me when I, before I come over, she's like, she said, my street don't have the sign. It's not up on my street. But my street is by the Walgreens. Off of Chagrin. I said, oh, okay. Why when I drive up there, I don't want to turn down the street for some reason. I, my brain just didn't want to, I didn't just, my brain just locked up. So I'm circling around the block looking for the, you know, the street, you know, I'm just, I'm just tripping. I don't know if I had been drinking or high or something. I see a police car bagged up into the, the little fire station driveway, just chilling right there. So they see me riding around a few times, so they finally decided to pull me over. Right, and they they drew down on me. Get out the car, blah, blah, blah. And I got my hands by my head. They got me on the, on the yellow line in the middle of the street. They get me up and walk me over to the car. As they walking me over to my truck, they park behind me. I can hear the dispatcher on the radio. Talking about a stolen car. The, fir the first three was mine, but the, 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 the last three wasn't. I said, man, that ain't my uh, license. I said, you know, this car ain't stolen. That ain't even my license, bro. So the, the cop, the, you know, it was a good cop and a bad cop. So the bad cop, like, oh, don't worry about that. Where your, you know, and he was like, where your ID at? I said, it's in the car somewhere. The, the good cop looked at me and come over to me. Now, man, you're in my, in my top pocket right here. I got, a, I got a, like a half ounce of crack that I supposed to dropped off early and I forgot all about it. It's right here. I got the receipts from my shopping. I got some money and I got my ID all right here on my chest. The good cop come over, hit my pocket, rub me down, right? And feel all this shit on my chest. He unsnapped. He unsnapped my pocket and stick his hand down in my pocket and feels around and pull out my driver's license and nothing else. I was already saying like I'm on my way to jail on a humbug. That's how it happened. You always go to jail on a humbug. You know what I'm saying? He tell the bad guy, I got his ID right here and he's clean. Letting him know that he patted me down. And run my ID and end up letting me go. I never forget this, bro. See, a lot of people look at it as a blessing. I looked at it as God ain't through with you yet. God ain't through with you yet. He got something more in store for you, like a life sentence without parole. That's the way I look at it. With that being said, let me intro you to Mr. Kenneth Knox down in Georgia. Mr. Knox did a procedure to save this baby's life right here. Y'all can look it up. I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't gonna tell you know exactly what he did, but he saved his baby's life. And the mother was so impressed with this officer that she made this officer her daughter's godfather. They like this. Ain't this a feel-good story? Shout out to Mr. Ken up knocked down there in Georgia. Got another one for y'all. 
meet Mr. Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Nix down in Florida. These two young ladies flagged them down on the highway and told them that their baby wasn't breathing. He did a chest procedure on the baby and maybe some breath stuff, some mouth to mouth stuff that didn't work. He grabbed the baby and took off in his car to the hospital. They flying behind him. Got the baby to the hospital just in time to save the baby's life. Y'all heard me say it, right? With all the videos you can watch on YouTube with these dirty ass cops doing shit racist cops and all that. But you know, a lot of times, you know, the good cops don't get, they don't get the headlines. Because there's too much bad shit going on. But y'all heard me say it before, I believe law enforcement is the most important occupation on the planet. You couldn't be a doctor, you couldn't be a lawyer, you couldn't be in the NBA, you couldn't be in the NFL if we didn't have structure of law. None of the other occupations matter if it's hell on earth. If it's gangs walking around like on the walking dead, you know, trying to you know, create their own government and they, you know, and they own, you know, they run this shit. Ain't no law. Come on, bro. You can't tell me that this law enforcement is not the most important occupation on this fucking planet. Y'all ready for this? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you coming to the stage, coming to the stage, Mr. Matthew Luckhurst. Mr. Luckhurst here, he like passing out shit sandwiches. Yeah, he like playing in his shit. A few years back in San Antonio, he gave a homeless person a shit sandwich. He got fired, but on some kind of court tech, uh, technicality, they kind of threw it out or something. So he goes to Floresville in, in Texas, I think, also. And guess what happened? The people emailed, called for years, bro. They did it for years until they let him go. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? And guess what else? While he was over there, he was on bike patrol or something, and somebody accused him and another officer by using the, the ladies' bathroom at the, I guess, on the beach or a bike patrol, wherever they was at, and spread shit all on the toilets and all of that and fucked the bathroom up. He's supposed to serve and protect. Can you trust him with a gun? Fucking with a gun. Imagine some of the some of the other shit he didn't done. Now you know you didn't heard the dudes. Uh, you hear a, a cop getting buzzed for uh, planting some dope on somebody, so they recall all his other cases. Like to me, everybody he did, did, did he didn't arrest him should get back in court because he passed out a shit sandwich. That's anybody can do that would do anything. You know what I'm saying? It ain't fun. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm about to play a video for y'all. This video is out of Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, I'm just going to play it. And we're going to talk about it after. I'm going to let y'all guys check this out. reveals never before seen or heard recordings captured by a malfunctioning police cruiser camera revealing racism within the ranks of the Wilmington Police Department. More than two years ago, three Wilmington police officers were publicly fired after the recordings were created and discovered by chance. Although the department released some of the transcripts of the videos, a judge blocked the release of the recordings themselves. WECT's investigative reporter Michael Pratt worked for months to get those recordings, and Michael, we were finally able to get them released. 
Yeah, Fran, and the judge didn't change his mind, but when one of the three fired officers appealed his dismissal to Superior Court, the recordings were submitted as evidence and became public record. Still, it took us getting our lawyers involved to obtain them. And we do want to warn you, the language and subject matter caught in these recordings can be very disturbing to hear. You know, you have a civil war, go ahead and wipe them all the map. That'll, that'll put them back about four or five generations because, yeah. and then you know what? The good ones can go live in their little communities and they can do what they want to do to stay out of my way. That's former Wilmington police officer Kevin Piner talking with another former officer, Jesse Moore. The conversation was recorded on a police cruiser camera, which was accidentally activated. But if we do not get a handle on this, we are not going to have a country for our kids to be raised in. In the days before, police and protesters clashed in Wilmington following national calls to end police brutality after the murder of George Floyd, a black man in Minneapolis. You told me tonight, you said, all right, tomorrow's a purge day, get as many as you want. Do not go down there. I, 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 <coughs> <Kevin. coughs> I go down there. I go down there and slaughter them mother. The recordings were not only created by chance, but also discovered by chance when a supervisor conducting random audits of video footage decided to take a listen. So I just sat down as a supervisor. We're supposed to review a video from each person every month. And I just sat down that day saying, I'm going to try to get knock a few out today. And that's what I was doing. That's the supervisor who discovered the videos talking to Wilmington Police Department's internal affairs after she reported what she found. The court evidence exclusively obtained by WECT included not only the racist recordings, but four internal affairs investigations as well, including the three officers captured in the recordings. Both Jesse Moore and Kevin Piner admit that these are their voices in the recordings, and both say that the conversations were them venting, something internal affairs wanted to know a little bit more about. Uh, you just used the term and then you followed that up with having taken to a Negro magistrate and and so what, what's what's going on with that? Is that just how you vent? So yeah, I, I shot my mouth off, shouldn't have done that. That's not who I am, I'm not the racist. Keisha James, an attorney with the National Police Accountability Project, says regardless of stress on the job, this was more problematic than just venting. It's really hard to believe that these officers were just venting, especially when you have them calling for civil war and you have them um, using racial slurs. There's no doubt law enforcement is a stressful job. And in recent years, there has been a strain between the community and police. Both Piner and Moore told Internal Affairs that the tension at the time was reaching a boiling point. The whole thing that started this whole conversation, man, it's just that I'm just at a breaking point, you know. For many, the hate-filled language from the now former Wilmington Police Department officers came as a shock. But for Piner's supervisor, who found the recordings, it wasn't. So did what you hear on the video surprise you? No. The supervisor explains how she overheard similar, albeit less inflammatory, conversations during lineup in the prior days. On the larger level, James says it's not the fact that the officers said these things that surprises her. It's also rare for those officers to kind of... Um, remain um, terminated instead of being reinstated either at that department or another department. The scary part is that this, these two conversations just happened to get accidentally recorded and then um, the department took steps to investigate and then released the, some of the um, details about um, their investigation and what was contained in the recordings. That is typically not the case. However, District Attorney Ben David and Chief of Police Donnie Williams both made sure that didn't happen. So what we did is we said, not only are they immediately fired, but they should never hold the badge again anywhere in this great state. I have recommended that none of them be eligible for rehire in any position with the city of Wilmington. And Chief Williams told us when all of this came out that he planned to meet with every single officer one-on-one. -on -one. He also said he would implement implicit bias training for all 350 Wilmington police So, because one of them appealed what was going on, that was it. That that made it uh, everything public record. So this judge really was trying to hide this shit to the public. Ain't this a goddamn shame? Why are we so hated?
So if I get pulled over by the police and I wanted to start shooting the police, it should be self-defense. When you listen to shit like this, we don't know what's on them fucking mind. We a lot of black people got killed for a fucking uh, a turn signal. They got a fucking a knee in their throat. I can't breathe. The fuck, bro? Shit don't make some damn shame, bro. You know what I'm saying? To me, this this shit, this the uh, what they them shit, that's a conspiracy. That they should be charged with a conspiracy. Like they do everybody there and go. That should be a RICO. You want to purge on somebody? You want to shoot somebody in motherfucking back? The Vatican came out with a report. Y'all know what the Vatican is, right? They said over 1,700 priests been touching on kids. Where did the rest at? Look at this shit. Y'all ain't nobody shooting them in the back. Why don't y'all go purge on these motherfuckers? Go purge on these motherfuckers right here. Fucking chomo child molest around here in, 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 by our schools. In the churches. How come anybody running around killing these motherfuckers? Look at this shit. Happy New Year. This is about my generation.